cleaning tables, busing tables, working for the city, cleaning the streets. And uh, they essentially would only make, uh, I think, the equivalent to 20, 25 um, American or like 100 Turkish lira. But you were saying day. he said there they could live you know, decent on that. Yeah, so there apparently every day, you know, they, they stand a chance to bring in two, 400 lira. You know, and the, one, the, the amount of money I saw, you know, um, that was gifting to her was, I mean, outrageous. I mean, she probably made a thousand, more than a thousand lira, which uh, allegedly can, you know, get her where she needs to go for the next two to three months. But I think this is so a all you got to do is every few weeks go check into a hotel, knock the windows out, and then because it's a delicate immigrant, oh thank you for knocking your windows out, thank you for running the scam, oh we worship you, oh everything's free, oh I'm so I mean this is sick. I should have asked for a free hotel room. <laughs> and, and just go threaten to kill yeah. yourself and throw wads of cash at you, and you're you're you'll but, be worshipped. But apparently they're uh, they're playing the tourist every day, and uh, it's just a really sad attempt uh, to know that um, that's not real. Well, Pat Riley is here with us. Uh, you drop by occasionally and hang out at the studio. You've been gone for three weeks. Uh, but you were there in Europe during the midst of this. Uh, all i got to say is the Croatia photos. Man, where is that lake you were at? Uh, Plitvich Lakes and uh, Kirka uh, were two national parks that I went to. And I told the— Quite, uh, quite you, nice. You were telling me the women uh, are particularly not good-looking in that area? Not at all. Not at all. My <laughs> wife was happy to know that there were some extremely unattractive women there. So, uh, that you know— Because your wife went for two weeks, she had, but then you went for three. Correct. Yeah. But you were a good boy. I was very good, of course. Good man. All right. The women are ugly. The women are ugly. Continue. <laughs> proceed. But you said the further you go east, the better looking they get. Absolutely. Total torture. Hands down. Patrick Riley says that. <laughs> <laughs> Certified delicious women. Uh -huh. And the food was good, too. But, you know, the feminists say we're not supposed to compliment women because they control women. That's their territory. They run the women. And most top feminists, I understand, are lesbians. And so they want like a, like a giant elephant seal out there with their harem going, my women, blah. My women, blah. can we show some some uh, elephant seals, uh, uh, dominant elephant seals? And so they're just telling us stay away from their women. But I always want to tell all of them, no, we're we're muscling into the table. Absolutely. No, you don't get all the women. My women. That's only fair. <laughs> you want to do a uh, elephant seal imitation? No, I'm cool on that. Yeah, you, you, you ever? <laughs> you know that's how you secretly go to a beach and pick up all the women. Well, I mean that's that's a mating ritual, isn't it? I'm serious. Like they've noticed in Italy, like the bigger, fatter, arrogant guys. Well, I tell you, I, I, I tell you, he's literally got to be dominant. The, the, the big, all the big boys pulling up on the yachts, you know, in uh, in like Couture and Split and in Var, the, an island. Yeah, describe that Croatia. off Italy. You said it'd be like Russians with like thirty, yeah, tons, 30. Tons, tons, tons of Russians going through Budva. You know, you see all the mega yachts outside, and it's just uh, it's impressive. Well, that's an example of crony capitalism. Now, see the male. See the male. He's. Let, let's get some audio here. I mean, that's. That's a beautiful I mean, there's picture. a top feminist, and she says, look, these women are mine. See, I should have tried to bite. Kind of looks I didn't think like the new Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> can we get some audio, please? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But it's a horrible trip. You know, I'll probably never go back. Um, ugly country, ugly women. Of course, you're being sarcastic. Absolutely. It's gorgeous. I'd, I'd recommend What is ugly? Uh, ugly women means, means emergency danger, Will Robinson? Absolutely. Must vacate. Must leave now. Must escape, must run. Yes. <laughs> well, I tell you, no, no, but uh, where do you think this whole immigrant thing's going where, where people say you must accept all these foreigners, you must pay for everything, you must pay for everybody's sex changes, you must pay for everybody's abortions. I mean, I'm sick of people telling me I've got to pay for all this stuff. Well, as an American, uh, you know, I, I only ran into people mostly from like New York or maybe California. Uh, however, everybody was saying, well, you should take some of these refugees. And I go, do you even know that we've got our own migration problem? And they go, you don't have a migration problem. We have a migration problem. Like they're superseded ours. Like, they, you know, you need to take some Syrian refugees on top of whatever, you know, alleged migration issue you have. And most of them, by the way, are not Syrian. Ride shotgun with us. Pat Riley is here. Uh, any closing comments, though, on watching clearly this fake suicide attempt that, that you know, ties in? Can we roll in the background the uh, footage just for TV viewers of the father throwing his children on the tracks? Because the media act like this was this beautiful, wonderful thing that was going on. No, it's sickening. But see, if it's a precious immigrant, then it's beautiful. It's just sad, you know, you, you, you hate to see people struggle as you walk through the streets. Everybody's, you know, that's a tourist is having a good time, um, you know, walking around, seeing the shops, having a few drinks, buying carpets. Uh, and these uh, women, you know, are doing this, uh, this, this song, this pleading song of, you know, uh, you know, you should feel guilty. You should give me money. 
Um, and every corner you take, every half a block, you know, you see. You, you, did, a you did a rendition of this for me this morning. Uh, can you give uh, Something like that. And, you know, their native tongue. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's the most interesting form of begging I've ever seen. Been to but I'm supposed countries. to fall down to that. Like, I was in Rome, and I was so shocked by it. I had my iPhone, but I didn't get footage of it because I was just so stunned by it. These three gypsies walk over, and they've got like this, looks like a three-foot-tall old woman, but it's not. And they just pull the veil off. And I knew about the scam, so it was real, though. And clearly this person had been dipped in battery acid when they were a baby. And it was this mutated, tortured person. And they just pull it off and go, ah. And it's just like, ugh. And I'm supposed to go, oh, thank you for torturing your child. I worship you. Your culture's so beautiful. And they have this thing at UT where... You know, you're supposed to adopt the gypsy culture and all this stuff. And I get the fact there are some gypsy bands that don't rob everybody and aren't into all this stuff. But, I mean, that's a fact they do this in Europe. It's a fact that that is this culture. It is a fact that it's predatory. It is a fact they mutilate their children. It is a fact that they inbreed. It is a fact they have genetic disorders. It is a fact. And I will not worship it. Absolutely. I, I'm done. I'm not worshiping it. And I'm against torturing children, I'm against mutilating children, and I'm against raping children. But the U.S. military is ordered to cover it up. New York Times, you heard it here a month ago. How sick is that, Riley? It's absolutely atrocious. Now you're being, uh, now you're being a pedophile phob. Apparently I'm at everything. I was, I was called a waitist because I sat next to a 350-pound uh, Turkish man who was uh, overflowing by about six to eight inches on me. Uh, an hour on the tarmac, two hours in the air. Um, I put a picture up on social media and uh, I hashtag fat Turkish and uh, people said that that wasn't quite nice, but uh, he had to have the seatbelt extender to uh, sit in the chair. When I got up from the three hours of sitting next to him, my uh, right shoulder, and I have a photo actually, my right shoulder was completely wet from his sweat. So now I'm a waitist as well as a uh, sex. One time I was on a, a coach airplane flight back from some TV show in LA with a guy that I'm not exaggerating, probably weighed 500 pounds, and I know had never taken a bath. He had the most nasty, hell-on-earth smell I've ever Why smelled. Why are your onions and garlic on your food, not on your people, right? <laughs> well, I, uh, but the thing is, I'm supposed to just sh shove my head up under his arm and worship him. But that's what it is. It's a bunch of thugs, scum, parasites, trash of every race, color, and creed that want to intimidate the producers into bowing down to them and being their slaves. So this is literally a giant horde and a gang with all these different gangs of filth that team up together to make producers, builders, serve them. And I'm sick of it. I mean, it's Atlas Shrug, man. Well, you know, you shouldn't, uh, people shouldn't let them, you know, the, the beggars uh, like that detour them from going to countries like that. However, it's a dime a dozen. It's everybody with the same story, just like here have in Have you Austin. seen the gypsies where they have the deformed children? Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's just the same thing as going up to Hancock's. But I mean, it, why aren't you for dipping your child in battery acid? Well, I guess I need to. How dare you not accept their culture? I, I, have, I have to accept it. And hey, did your wife wear a long, mini, long skirt? To be respectful, of course. You know what they say. You submit. Racist, filth, white trash scum. Absolutely. Good. All right, let's go to a caller. Stay here, Riley. Sunny in Nevada, you're on the air. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Hey. Um, basically, I'm uh, calling because I do love the, the InfoWars show, and I agree with uh, mostly everything, except there is a lot of... Uh, uh, Goebbels' method of propaganda being used in the United States, and and it's it's just human nature. I mean, I, I believe it is. It, you know, that's just uh, survival of the fittest. You know, uh, eliminate the weak. And I don't believe it's just racial against Hispanics. It's against anyone who uh, perceives to be weak. It's the power it's elite working with weak groups to make them angry and to feel like they've been messed with to make them aggressive and gang memberish. Now that's an oversimplification. Yeah, well, 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 the 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 middle class is being diverted. Their 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 attention is being diverted to one area, and they're not being able to focus on what's really going on. Like going down to 
the root of the actual problem. So basically, you see a, a bunch of immigrants coming in. Say, well, these are immigrants. They're coming here to take this. They're coming here to take that. Oh, but undoubtedly, maybe, immigrants have been used as scapegoats in every culture and every history. Immigrants make a lot of contributions. There's also a lot of negatives throughout history, depending on the time, the period, the area, the circumstances, the economics, the socioeconomic interactions, the larger geopolitical ramifications of the sociological interface that has to be looked at in a wide spectrum actuary of the overall system. But if you pull back from all that and look at government welfare directing culture war the new world order wants your guns it, want, it wants open borders it wants to make you pay for somebody to have a sex change i don't care if some guy wants to go in and have the doctor you know get rid of his you know what is johnson the issue is i ain't paying for it and i'm not going to be bullied into paying for it which i already am because they said i was against them it's a load of bull i'm not against any of these transgender people i'm not I'm sick of them being used as the litmus test to force all this on me. God bless you, Sonny. Any comments on that, Patrick J. Riley? You're absolutely right. You know, I'm his not, middle name is I'm, not Jay. I'm not paying for it either. Jay for Geronimo. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's go ahead and take another call. Dan in Indiana, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I just had a comment on TSA and a quick picture on the flights. Everybody stop flying. Wouldn't take very long. They change that real quick. Well, they've already cut back a little bit because of folks quitting flying or losing thirty billion a year in tourism. But it's 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 just continuing to some extent. I mean, they hadn't messed with me in a while. That I guess I just forgot and tried to you know they they thought smuggle jelly, jelly smeller. But but oh, here's the key to the whole TSA deal. Make your point, sir, and then I'll make my final point on the TSA. I haven't made yet. Go ahead. No, I, I was just saying I I did strip search. And cavity search, and that's just not good. You know, I, I won't be subjected to any of that anymore. Well, you know, in the Beavis and Butthead movie, Beavis then thinks that he's finally scored when they, they do the <laughs> cavity search. All right, God bless you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Mike Josh. Oh, just he's ridiculous. Good. He's good. He's good. Um, you know, this gets to me, Riley, doesn't it? A little bit. I mean, you should be, you know, you should be a little angered about it. Everybody should. Half the people don't even know. What if, what if you decide you want to have the government pay for your dog to have a sex change? Well, I think, I think if the dog wants a sex change, they owe it to the dog to provide facilities and care for it. And then what do you do? Like have buttons the dog pushes? But even if it doesn't really want one, like one is filet mignon, it hits one button, the other's chicken. So it'll choose filet mignon. That means sex change. <laughs> and so the dog runs up and then hits it. That's a segue. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that's how preposterous it all is. Oh, absolutely. And again, we wouldn't be covering it except it's the number one news story constantly. I bought like five magazines when I flew up to Omaha to read there and back. And I read basically all five of them. And it was just all social engineering. You know, I can say that uh, I've been throughout most of uh, Southeast mainland Asia, and uh, it's very custom for you to run into ladyboys and g gangs of ladyboys. And, uh, you know, they're not uh, wanting a whole, you know, news spread and, uh, you know, a TV show about them. And, you know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, Caitlyn Jenner comes in the picture and everybody, you know, is concerned with. Well, the point is, why do you have to pay for it? I, I'm just, it's not even a moral judgment. I shouldn't have to pay for it. I want to go to some more phone calls, but the, here's the key to the TSA deal. The TSA people, some of them were really rude. Some of them were somewhat apologetic. This went on for like 35 minutes. They said, listen, we get fired if we don't do this exactly the way they say. So I got patted down twice, interrogated about my jelly. And I was just, I go, I'm going to miss my plane. That's fine. Just act arrogant and powerful. I don't care. Well, why do you have this jelly? And I said, I just forgot, man. I thought I lived in a free country. You know, there's some produce in there too. Excuse me for buying local. Well, you can go, but... You know, you better watch it. You know, you're lucky. And I'm just like, no, man, you're not lucky that, 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 that we live in a country like this. This is a joke. People are like, come on, man, hurry up. You know, they're like, what's this guy's got a problem here? Land of the free, home of the brave, where our government funds Al-Qaeda and ISIS and open borders and buses the illegals in and pays for everything. But I can't have jelly. It's all just social conditioning. And here's what was sad. They told me it's not our choice. We're just doing our jobs. And that's what zero tolerance is about. Absolutely. It's about these people have no leeway to make their own personal decision as a TSA agent. They just are robots. They follow total orders. Here's this guy with no criminal record. He's clearly bought some stuff at the farmer's market. He's got a thing of Concord grape jelly. 
Yes, I said, take the jelly. And they go, oh, no, we got to test it. We got to open it up. We got to ask you questions about it. And I couldn't sit there with a straight face. I go, man. And I know they ate it that night or that next morning. It's it's not funny. Well, now you're probably labeled as a jelly smuggler. You should really think about that. It would have been fine if it was a whole suitcase of dead babies being sold to Planned Parenthood. And then there's the, the commenters. Some of them are like, I bet you just did that to get attention. Oh, yeah, like I need to get attention.